Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani channel, we bring another new episode before you of our program that goes by the name of the Parish Kings of the Past. In our today's episode, we've brought another interesting, faith-refreshing topic before you. Today, the king that we will discuss about, he had a lot of power. His reign was spread over the entire earth and he is among those who also challenged the might and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had a very strange desire that insha'Allah will also cover in today's episode. But before that, let's first of all enlighten our hearts with listening to the virtue of reciting Durood, sending peace and salutations upon the best of the creation, upon the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has stated the summary of the hadith is that the one who recites the rood upon me 1000 times a day will not die until he sees his place in paradise. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So dear viewers of Madani channel, our today's topic will revolve around such a king who challenged the power of Allah Almighty, who challenged the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He challenged the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wanted to build a similar kind of paradise on this earth. Who was this king? His name was Shaddad. Shaddad was the king who wanted to build a paradise in this world as well. He had read about the excellences of paradise in the books of the past, in the previous books. He knew from those scriptures that what paradise contains, what paradise has. Hence, because he was a ruler of the entire world, he had power, he had possession of wealth of this world, he had the possession of the treasures of this world. Hence, he wanted to create a similar kind of paradise on this earth as well. And dear viewers of Madani channel, it was through a dialogue, through the conversation of few companions which has been reported in the books through which we come to know about this amazing incident, amazing event that took place in the history. Let's straight away go into that narration through which we come to know about this amazing event of Shaddad where he wanted to build a paradise on this earth as well. Hazrat Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala who states that I lost my camels in the desert of Aden. So I went in search of those camels in the desert and as I went in the search of those camels, an amazing and spectacular city appeared before me. The city was surrounded by a fortress and there were beautiful palaces built all around that fortress. He says that I went towards it thinking that I'll ask someone regarding the lost camels, but I did not come across anyone over there. There was no one over there. It was absolutely empty. It was deserted. And as he entered the fortress, he says, that he saw two very big doors, massive doors that had white and red precious pearls embedded in it. He says 
that he had not seen such beautiful and strong doors ever before. It was something new for him. He was absolutely awestruck. He was amazed by looking at these massive, beautiful doors. Seeing this amazing and beautiful city in the desolated desert where there was no one, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Khilawa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he became a bit worried. He opened one of the doors and entered it. Upon entering that door, he found himself in such a city that had so many palaces built inside it. On top of every palace, there were rooms that had so many rooms built on top of them that were made of gold. Now, gold, silver and other precious jewels were used in their construction. And in the courtyard, in the hallways, there were precious gems and pieces of musk and saffron lying all around. Now Sayyidina Abdullah bin Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he picked a few precious gems and pieces of musk and saffron from there. However, he could not separate the embedded pearls and jewels in, inside the doors and that were embedded inside the courtyard. Thereafter, he came back to Yemen. Upon returning back, he told the people about the amazing city and he also showed them the jewels and the other things that he had brought from there. But because a very long time passing by, it had been a very long time, so the pearls, they started to turn pale and few of them had already turned very pale. Now, when this became very famous all across the country, when people in Yemen, they came to know about this, when this news was widespread all around, then Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who was in reign at that moment of time, he was the caliphate, he was Amir al-Mu'mineen at that time, he called Sayyidina Abu Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala and inquired about the entire incident. So Sayyidina Abdullah bin Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala he told him about the amazing and the strange city and regarding the things that were in there. Now upon this, Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala found all these facts to be amazing and surprising and he became quite curious about it and he asked that how shall I believe? How shall I believe in you and all that you've mentioned? Now upon this, he radiallahu ta'ala presented some rubies that had paled off to some extent as compared to the normal rubies. He presented them in the court of Sayyiduna Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then he radiallahu ta'ala anhu also presented some pieces of musk that did not contain any fragrance. But when those pieces were broken, then Sayyiduna Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu smelt a very strong fragrance emanating from those pieces of musk. Moreover, he radiallahu ta'ala anhu also smelt the saffron. Upon this, Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu believed in this entire incident. Now, Hazrat Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu wanted to know more about this. So he asked people, who is the one who can tell me about the city and that who is the founder of this city? And also, that which nation does this incident belong to? By Allah, no one was granted a kingdom like that of Sayyiduna Sulaiman bin Da'ud alayhi salatu wasalam. The kingdom that Sayyiduna Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam was given, no one has been given such kind of kingdom. But even in that kingdom, there was no such city that would meet this description. The description of this city that Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu has mentioned. So some people, they said that in this era, in today's day and age, in the entire world, it is only Sayyiduna Ka'b al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who can give you authentic and correct information regarding it. If you feel appropriate, then call Sayyiduna Ka'b al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and hide Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Qilaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu somewhere. If he radiallahu ta'ala anhu did enter that city, then Sayyiduna Ka'b al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu will definitely tell you about the city and about him 
entering that city as well because it is such a great matter that the one who was to enter the city and to find out about its secrets this is such a great and amazing fact that it would definitely be mentioned in the previous books the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed upon other prophets in the scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed upon the other prophets whatever has been created on earth and whatever has taken place in it and whatever major events are to take place in future all of them have been mentioned in a great detail in the blessed Torah and at this moment of time Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the biggest scholar of the previous books insha'Allah azza wa jal he can definitely inform you of this incident now people they suggested Sayyiduna Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu to call Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu as they by listening to this uh, amazing event they realized that such a big such a major event it is not possible that it is not mentioned in the previous books and Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was highly acclaimed amongst everyone he was known by everyone to be the biggest scholar of the previous books so they knew that if this major event is mentioned in the previous books then definitely Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu will be aware of it that's why they suggested Sayyiduna Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu to call Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu so upon this Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu called Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and asked, asked him that O oh, Abu Ishaq Abu Ishaq was the kunya was the patronymic of Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu so Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked him that O oh, Abu Ishaq I called you for a very big task I hope that you will have the knowledge regarding it. Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala said that Allah Almighty is all-knowing and aware. Everyone is helpless before him. All my knowledge is due to him. Please ask me whatever you want to ask. Now dear viewers of Madani channel, upon this Sayyiduna Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala he asked few questions to Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala but before this we need to learn a beautiful lesson over here that despite being the greatest of the scholars of his time what did Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said he humbled himself in front of Sayyiduna Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he praised Allah Almighty that Allah Almighty is all knowing he's all aware and whatever knowledge I have it is by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first he humbled himself in front of Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he praised Allah Almighty then he proceeded further in saying to him then now ask me whatever you want to ask so we shall also humble ourselves if we possess any excellence any quality because it is by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now dear viewers of Madani channel Sayyidina Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala asked him that oh Abu Ishaq tell me if you know about any such city in the world that was built using gold and silver bricks whose pillars were made of emeralds and rubies whose palaces were adorned and decorated with pearls in which gardens were built and lakes were made to flow and whose paths were very wide now upon this Sayyiduna Ka'bul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala said that O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen Ya Amirul Mu'mineen I swear by the one under whose control my life is I was quite certain I was quite sure that someone will definitely ask me about the city and about its founder the attributes of the city that you have mentioned and what you have been told are true the city was built by Shaddad bin Ad and the name of the city was Iram Allah Almighty states this city in the Holy Quran in the following manner Irama Zatil Imad Allati Lam Yukhlaq Mithluha Fil Bilad Translation from Kanzul Iman The people of Iram, meaning people of the city, who were exceptionally tall that the likes of whom were never born in the cities. Sayyiduna Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala said, O Ka'ab, may Allah Almighty shower his mercy upon you. 
tell us in detail about the city. Now the city is the one which Shaddad had ordered his workers to build. Keep this in mind. And now Ka'ab al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he's mentioning the details of the city to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Hazrat Sayyidina Amir al-Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Therefore, Sayyidina Ka'ab al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ad, he had two sons. Ad was another a leader in the history. So Ad, he had two sons. One was named Shadid and the other was named Shaddad. When Ad, he passed away, when he died, then both the sons, they caused a great mischief across the land and they took over all the cities by force. Some leaders were compelled to obey them out of their fear and the remaining ones were included in their kingdom after fighting them, after conquering them, they were also included in their kingdom. So they, using force, also conquered those places as well. To the extent that everyone was forced to surrender before them, before Shaddad and Shadid. Now in their era, there was no one in the east or the west who had not accepted their reign, their uh, rule, their kingship, whether it was wholeheartedly or whether it was out of compulsion. By hook or by crook, everyone accepted their rule, accepted their kingdom, accepted their kingship. Now, when their kingdom gained power and their rule became acclaimed everywhere, now Shadid, his brother, he passed away. When he died, now Shaddad became the only king of the entire kingdom. Before, this kingdom had two kings, Shadid and Shaddad. But now, Shadid died, he passed away. So, Shaddad became the only king of the entire kingdom. Nobody dared to fight him. Nobody dared to challenge him. Shaddad, he had a great eagerness, a great yearning to read the previous scriptures, to read the previous books. Whenever Shaddad would read about the palaces, the rubies, the jewels, the gardens of paradise, then his evil nafs would persuade him to build a similar kind of paradise on this earth as well. So dear views of Madani channel, up to here we come to know that Shaddad has become the king of the entire earth now. He is the only king of the kingdom that was split into two kings before. But the other king, that was his brother Shadid, he passed away, he died, and Shaddad has become the only king. And everyone is forced to accept his kingship, to accept his kingdom, to accept him as a king. No one dared to challenge him, no one dared to confront him. And they all happily or out of compulsion, they had to accept his kingship. And now, when he read the excellences and virtues of paradise in the previous scriptures, when he came to know about the gold and the palaces, the rubies, that how those palaces are built uh, in paradise, they're built of rubies and gold and other jewels, and their gardens and lakes flowing over there, then his evil nafs persuaded him. It made him arrogant that you're also a king. You've got possessions of the treasures of the entire world. No one can say no to you. You have authority over everything and everyone. Why don't you also build a similar kind of paradise on this earth? You are the king. You are the supreme king. This is what his nafs persuaded him towards. And now his eagerness, his yearning became very firm. And now he proceeded ahead towards building a similar kind of paradise on this earth as well. And this is where he challenged the might and power of Allah Almighty. In our next episode, inshaAllah, we will discuss that how Shaddad built this paradise of his on this earth, how he ordered his workers and his army to work towards building this paradise, how he gathered all this, how long it took them to build this paradise, and what eventually happened when Shaddad went to visit this paradise 
after a long time when the paradise was built, after a long wait, when he was going to visit this very paradise of his, then what exactly happened? Inshallah, we will cover all this in our next episode. So make sure that you tune into our next episode in this program of ours to know what happened next to Shaddad and the paradise that he wanted to build on this earth. Make sure that you keep watching Madani channel and keep enlightening your hearts through the beautiful programs of Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon